Hey, hi everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our professional lunch series with uh, Adam Poplowski. So uh, Adam, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself briefly before we get started with uh, the rest of today's event? Sure. So uh, my name is Adam Poplowski. I graduated in 2017 from CUNY BA slash Macaulay. And for the past three and a half, almost four years, I've been working as a copywriter at Getty Images on their marketing creative services team. Okay, thank you, Adam. So uh, for today's professional lunch series events, we're going to be going through a list of questions and then towards the end, we'll reserve a little bit of time for any students who may have questions that they wanna ask or if you happen to have any questions come up, you can feel free to raise your hand or drop them in the chat box and we'll try to get to everyone. So uh, Adam, can you please share a little bit about like your undergraduate experience at Macaulay Honors College? Like what activities were you involved in and what have you learned from them? Sure, so I was not the biggest like activity doer in terms of like after school clubs, I didn't do too many. Um, but one thing that I did do when I was part of CUNY BA, I was part of the CUNY BA um, like student council. It was like a representative thing where we met, I think, once every three, four weeks. And it was with CUNY BA leadership plus some student representatives. And that was something that was really valuable. I think that, you know, when you're in undergrad, like adults are still like adults and it's kind of difficult to kind of feel like you're on the same level as like these professors and um, teachers and deans, but being part of that kind of like everyone had a voice, everyone had representation where they were able to speak freely and not feel like they're kind of below. So doing something like that, like being part of kind of, you know, any club that you can be part of like the leadership or even just have a voice in, I thought was really helpful and really prepared me for having a voice in a professional setting. Yeah, it's a, definitely a big transition from high school into college and all of a sudden you're like an adult and it's, I, I understand that feeling that it's a little bit weird at first. So I think that's very helpful um, advice for the students. Could you walk us through a typical day, um, like what looks like a typical day for you as a senior marketing copywriter at Getty Images and also give us like a brief overview of your career trajectory so far? Sure. So brief day would be um, at 10 o'clock every morning. We have a team stand up. So in the office when we were like pre-COVID, we would all just huddle in a room, talk about what we're working on, um, see if anyone needs help with anything, if there's anything that might be delayed. And now it's all on Zoom. So we sit in a Zoom virtual room like this, talk through what projects we're working on and, you know, go forward after that. Um, typically, I work on things that range from emails to web pages to um, like out of home ads, like print ads, um, really anything with writing that might be on the team, especially that has like a marketing slant. I'll be working on something like that. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Um, social, like paid social, paid search. Uh, we do like quarterly sales that we've been working on this week. So that's like a big initiative. Um, and in terms of my career tra trajectory, it's kind of funny because I started as an intern at Infor um, and they had an internal agency called Hook and Loop. And the only reason that I got that internship was before I joined CUNY BA, I was an English major. And the day before, and I was like an English major for the longest time, I joined CUNY BA and I was like, okay, I don't need the English major newsletter anymore. And I actually had an email drafted out saying, you know, can I please be taken off this newsletter? I'm not an English major anymore. And before I sent it, took another day. And within that 24 hour period, I got an email about an internship at Infor, which I applied to. I had no idea what copywriting was. I had no idea it had anything to do with marketing, but I just needed an internship paid. Um, I was studying abroad the next year. So I was like, I'll get some money over the summer and you know, we'll see how I like it. And that sort of started my journey there. And I was at Infor and Hook and Loop for two years. So basically through the entirety of my junior and senior year, as well as my sophomore summer, I worked there. Um, I worked full-time during the summers. I worked part-time during the school year. I even got to do some part-time work while I was studying abroad, which was fantastic. And then actually when I was at Infor, um, my senior years in like May, 
I was looking for jobs, could not find anything. Like it was like, I applied everywhere that I possibly could. Um, I was in talks with Infor to stay on and the end of May, I got an offer letter from Infor to stay there. And then almost kind of like, you know, fate would have it. Um, that same day that I got a call from my manager saying get an offer letter, I was in class. I remember I was in class on a Wednesday. We have like a Macaulay honors class that we had. Um, and I got a phone call or actually an email from the chief marketing officer at Getty saying that they're looking to create a new team. They're looking for copywriters. I thought it was fake. I thought it was spam because it came into my um, portfolio page website and I never get any real mail there. And I took a chance and thankfully got into Getty. I mean, it was like a really wild ride. I felt bad for not staying with the team that I had it in for, but I felt like I had to do something new. And now the rest is history. I've been in Getty now for three and a half years. I got promoted um, a few months back to a senior copywriter and it's been a great, great ride. That's great. Congratulations on your uh, recent promotion. Thank you. Um, so I know you just mentioned that you started as an intern at Hook and Loop. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit about how that internship kind of prepared you for your current position at Getty or if there are any overlaps that you've seen from the internship and your current position? Sure. So the internship was amazing because it was like a crash course. I mean, be perfectly honest, I did not take any marketing classes in college, like absolutely no marketing classes. It was not something that I even thought about as a career. Like I, even with like the copywriting, like I didn't really connect the dots of like it being part of marketing or I didn't really think about it in the sense that it is marketing. Um, so getting to that internship really paved the way to like learn about marketing, see that marketing is so much more than just like, being a marketing manager, like there's developers, there's designers, there's people who do front end, back end, like it's just a whole world of marketing that I didn't even think about. Um, and I think the internship really, really prepared me well because the first assignment that I ever did at my internship was to write like a quote from the CEO about diversity. And this was like, so like I was like 20 years old and like they're asking me to write a quote from like the CEO. So it was really like daunting and but it's something that, you know, helped me learn a lot about copywriting, what copywriting is, how to be an effective copywriter. Um, and it was my first time working like a big organization. So even just the dynamics and power plays between like different teams. And it's just a great learning experience and jumping off point to get into like the professional world. And I was lucky enough to have like a huge cohort of other interns. It was about like 15 to 20 of us the first time around. And the next summer was about, I think even like 45 to 50. So it was just a great way to like make connections, um, meet new people and also develop my skills as a professional. That's really wonderful. Um, what would you say is like the most fulfilling and exciting part about your work currently? I would say getting recognition. Um, I think that just as a fair warning for anyone thinking about getting into like graphic design or copywriting is it's a very fulfilling job, but it can be something where, you know, you can't really tie what you do to like revenue impact, or you can't really maybe say like that, you know, because of what I wrote or what I designed, this happened. Like it's a little difficult to kind of get those numbers. So getting recognition from like the CMO or from your, from higher ups about, writing that you did or something that you've designed always is very, very gratifying because it's, it is difficult to like kind of like really tied into like an actual number or like an ROI of the money that they put into you and like the development that they put toward you to show that that's actually paying off. Is there like one specific achievement so far that like you're the most proud of right now? Um, I'd say there was one cool thing that I got to work on was um, it was like there was I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Can Young Lions. It's like a advertising competition in Can for young creatives, usually at agencies. And there was a last second need for like a out of home ad that talked about um, diversity and inclusion and how like Getty Images is driving, is driving force behind that in visuals. And no one else on my team was in. I was the only writer on staff at the moment. and. I was able to like put together something with like the creative director within like, 
an hour and get it off printed and it was up like the next day in can. So that was really cool. And that was definitely one of the cooler moments about like that, like kind of look back on fondly and it was really well received. So yeah, I'd have to say that was probably the coolest moment. So was that like a project where you were the only one who worked on it for like the most part? Yeah. So it was something where we actually um, had an exercise like a year or two back where we wrote like, potential taglines or potential slogans for Getty Images. And I was able to go back, use some of that, adapt it into what the brief called for and have it printed out. I mean, I did work with a uh, senior designer or creative director who was a designer. So it was a team effort in that sense. But yeah, I was the lead writer on that. The only person who touched it from a writing standpoint. So it was cool to be able to add that to my portfolio. Yeah, that's really cool that you were able to do all of that in such a short period of time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, would you say, like, is there one skill, attribute, or strategy that has helped you, like, most throughout your career, or even in, like, the project you had just mentioned where you were able to put that together in short notice in a short period of time? Is there anything that you could share with us? I think that what helped me the most throughout like everything, whether it's college, undergrad, um, my internship, and now my career, is just having a good disposition. Like I think that being, putting the work in and while, and also being just friendly and like a nice person will actually get you so far that I think that just, it helps build relationships. And I think that that's such an important part about being like a young professional is building those relationships with your bosses because you never know where your bosses are going to go after your current position. Um, and I think having those connections and just being a hard worker who kind of doesn't get too flashy because I've seen a few people who are like stars that burned a little too bright and then just like crashed. And I think that it's just important to be consistent um, and just hardworking. And I think that that's like probably the most important Thing. And that's what helped me the most, I think, is just being there, being on time, doing what you have to do, um, knowing when you have too much work on your plate and saying something about that. Like, I think that it's just, it's, an, it's, it's, it's weird because it's like, I feel like it's something where you just have to, and I know it's cliche, but just be the best that you possibly can be. Yeah, so you had mentioned like, you know, you never know where your bosses might end up or like how you started at the internship and then you kind of found your way into Getty Images. Was there like one particular mentor or maybe someone who played a major role in your career thus far, allowing you to like get to where you are? Yeah, I mean, I think that I'd say two people. Um, my boss in my internship and my current boss at Getty. So my boss in my internship really pushed me to try something new because he knew that I was probably going to get a, a role um, at Infor. And he just said like, look, he's like, you know what? He's like, you're too young in your career to like join this company and not have tried something different. So he really pushed me to accept the Getty Images offer. Um, and I'm really grateful to him and he taught me a lot. And I think that um, he, him and my current boss have both taught me a lot about receiving feedback. And I think that's actually, if I could add another, answer to the last question that you asked about like a you know strategy or what you do to be successful like I think learning how to receive feedback is really important because you're gonna get negative feedback and you're gonna get positive feedback and you have to learn to just like not take it personally and both my bosses taught me that that it's not ever about you it's just stakeholders have different requests sometimes you meet them sometimes you don't sometimes you meet them and then they don't like them and it's just kind of a struggle that comes with the job and learning to just kind of roll with the punches, take the feedback, incorporate it, push back when you have to is also really, really important. Yeah, you brought up something really interesting, which is about how your boss at your mentorship actually, um, I'm sorry, internship actually pushed you to take the position at Getty because he felt that you were too young to be at Infor. Do you currently have any plans about kind of finding your way back to Infor or do you see that you've kind of gone off on like a different path? I think I've gone off on a different path. I mean, Infor was a great place to learn. And I definitely like highly, highly encourage anyone on this call, like to see if they have any internships, because I think that they had a fantastic internship program. Um, and I think that 
as great of a place as it was to learn, it was definitely a little more stuffier than Getty Images. Like it was, it's a technology company. So it's not, you know, you're not writing about images, videos, illustrations, like I write about now. Like it's about like enterprise resource planning and like financial technology. So I would, I wouldn't say no to going back to Infor, but I think that it's not as fun of a job to have. Like it's not, it's a little, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. Cause I feel like I would go back, but it would depend on the role. Yeah, it, on it, the uh, department. It seems like Infor is a bit more um, structured, like more tight structure, and then Getty Images seems to have a little bit more space for you to kind of develop your creativity and whatnot. Yes. I think it's yeah. a great way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so I was also kind of wondering when you were talking about how, like, taking negative feedback. I know that's something that a lot of people struggle with, and especially when you first get started in internships. I think that's something very new where you have to understand that, um, like coming from a Cully background for most of us in this chat, you know, we're kind of always aiming to be the best that we can. And so it is always hard when you get feedback that even though it's not personal, but it's negative, is there like a certain time where you have certain setbacks or you faced a significant challenge and something about the negative feedback and how did you kind of approach it and what did you learn from it? Oh, that's a great question. So I will say that when I first started at Getty, like there's like two moments that come to mind. Um, one where it was negative feedback and one where I just made a mistake. Um, so in one case, I just misspelled something and it was something where like, it was my first time I misspelled something and I felt like the worst. I was like, oh my God, like I'm going to get fired. Like, this is awful. This is so terrible. And like, I panicked and like, I spoke to like the marketing manager who was leading the project and she kind of like sat me down. She's like, relax. She's like, this piece of like marketing material that you wrote went through 10 different people after you wrote it who did not catch that spelling mistake. And I think that that kind of like, like, I feel like it's important to know that you're not solely responsible for, you know, a piece of content that you work on or a marketing plan, whatever it is, you have bosses, you have managers who look at it too. And of course, you don't want to have a spelling mistake in there, but mistakes do happen. And I think that that's something that was a really good, like, kind of like pep talk that I needed that, like, I'm not alone in this. Like, this is a team effort. And if, you know, there's a spelling mistake, we all missed it. Um, and then another moment was I was working on a webinar. And it was something where we had a stakeholder who was very, very demanding, who did not know what she wanted and was kind of hoping that we would, like, magically figure out what she wants. And I remember I was getting so frustrated and I felt like I was doing like such an awful job because she like everything I sent her was like, no, wrong, redlined, you know, like, oh, how can you talk about like our images more? And it was just, it was like crazy, crazy feedback. And my boss, who's still my boss now, like he also like sat me down and like, he was like, look, you just got to eventually kind of understand that people sometimes don't know what they want. And it's your job to try to get them as close as possible to what they want and also learn how to pick your battles. Like at one point it's like, you know what, if someone is so intent on wanting something in a certain way that you can't really have any control over that, then it's like, you just gotta let that slide. Cause it's like, you're not gonna be able to have everything that you wrote be perfectly the way you want it every single time. I'm actually dealing with that right now at work this week where we had someone who just was so intent on something being one way and my boss and I had it in a different way where we wanted to be it and kind of had to meet in the middle learn how to compromise and just kind of go forward from there. Would you say that it's gotten easier with like situations like this, or is it still something that kind of consistently happens? Because like, I am sure that, you know, you have like this one client and then you think you've met the most challenging of clients. And then <laughs> I'm sure somebody will step up to that and present a new yeah. kind of challenge. And like, are you able to, you know, you've been in um, your position for a bit now. Are you able to adjust to that easier now? Or do you feel like it's something that you constantly learn from and you constantly just move on with? I think, I think it's a little bit, bit of both. I think that um, I've got to be totally honest, like when I first started at Getty and even at Infor, like I'm sure you guys have heard of imposter syndrome, like that I struggled with that for the longest time because in the end, I think with like any kind of marketing thing where you kind of feel like, okay, like you're 
write like like I'm just writing something. I'm like, am I really writing something that's good? Like, are they just saying it's good? Am I really not that good? And I struggled with that. And I think that when you get the negative feedback, like that kind of compounds on top of that. And I mean, you know, I've been working there for four years now. And I think that in the past year and a half, two years, I've really kind of grown into the role. And I feel like I've kind of gotten past a point where I don't feel that imposter syndrome, like nagging at me anymore. Like it's, it's tough. Like, cause like, I know that even when I got into Macaulay, I was like, do I really deserve this? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Maybe I just like got in as like a fluke. And I think that that's something that a lot of people in our generation struggles with. Um, and it's totally normal and it's totally fine. And I think that that's just something that I would caution like against, like just try to, it's difficult. Cause like, I know it took me so long to get past it. So it's like, but you got to kind of know your worth, know that you did get into Macaulay. You are going to get into this internship, whatever job you have that, they picked you for you, not because of any other like extenuating factors. Um, and I think that with the feedback, like that's something that really, I struggle with it sometimes, like even this week, I struggle with it a little bit, but it's like, it gets easier as you go. Cause you get a little more confident with your abilities. You get a little more confident in your own work and in your own writing, at least for my case writing. And it's just a matter of being able to know when you can push back, when you can say, look, this is what I'm thinking. This is my reasoning. I think it's important to have a good rationale behind whatever decision you make. I think that that's something that I've learned over the past four years is as long as you come to the table with an argument that's, you know, that makes sense and that you've thought about, you should be fine. Yeah, that's really good advice, especially with, you know, just having some confidence in yourself sometimes. I think even as Macaulay students, we struggle with that at times. Um, but kind of talking about like going to the table and bringing up, you know, maybe disagreements and being respectful about that. Has COVID-19 affected your role as a senior marketing copywriter in any sense, like in terms of helping out with clients or working with your coworkers? Um, it's interesting. So when I joined the team four years ago, we actually were a completely brand new team. So top to bottom, every single person who joined was brand new over the course of like two or three months. And that was really helpful because we got to know each other really quickly. We were like a little, a little pot of people that we all like hung out together. And over the past four years, we've just gotten closer and closer. And I've got to be honest, like more than the actual job itself, like the team is what keeps me at Getty Images. Like it's just an incredible team. My boss is amazing. And we hit COVID with like, without like any hiccups. It was just kind of like March, I think 11th it was, we just said, you know what, we're going to be working from home. March 12th, we started working from home. And I really think that we were probably one of the most successful teams that kind of like got into the swing of COVID because we were already, I mean, our job allows us to work remotely no matter what we do. Like in terms of being a designer or a copywriter, like you can be remote. Um, and I think that it just was, like we, it was like, it went off without a hitch. We just kind of got right into it and thankfully had no issues. I think that if anything, like COVID has helped me with my confidence with talking to other people, because I feel like when you're in a room with someone, it can be a little intimidating depending on who the person is, who, what their um, like role is, if they're like a senior VP or whatever else, like when you're on Zoom, it kind of even equals the playing field. You know, it's like, I'm in my room, like my childhood room with like my teddy bears in the back. And it's like, you know, it just, it's kind of like, it feels a little more casual. It feels a little more easier to talk to. And yeah, I, but overall, I, I can't say it, it's like a, affected it too badly. Like it's kind of everything's running as usual with just working from home. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense that, you know, your job um, enables you to be able to work uh, virtually, but the team, the teamwork part was something that I didn't realize. So that's really interesting. Um, but I know you also just mentioned that the internal creative team you joined at Getty was brand new from, you know, top to bottom. Yeah. Did you find that being on a newly founded team presented like any challenges um, compared to joining like an already established team? Or do you think that was really the reason why, like you said, your team is really close and you guys were able to, you know, switch from office to virtual without any hiccups? I'd say it's the latter. I mean, I think that like when Infor, I joined like an already formed team as an intern, 
and it might have just been because I was an intern, but I felt like it was a little clicky. Like it was very much kind of like there was like the designers here, like the writers here, and it was yeah, they collaborated, they worked together, but it was it just didn't feel like that kind of um, close knit bond that we have now as like a team. Like when we all came in together, like we were learning everything together. We learned about the products together. We learned about the other departments together. Like we went through already so many changes in like the organization together. And I think that if anything coming to get coming into like a newly formed team like that. I mean, another great thing about it was that it was something where I hit the ground running as a writer where maybe in another company, I wouldn't have been able to get as much responsibility as I got in the first few years working at Getty because it was just me and one other senior writer. So me as a junior copywriter and then a senior copywriter. And we basically had the same roles and responsibilities because there wasn't really a predetermined oh, like the junior takes care of this, the senior takes care of that. So it was kind of like a free for all of work on what you want to work on. Um, if the senior copywriter is busy, then I get to take something that maybe she would actually be better off doing or, you know, traditionally a senior copywriter would do. So I think that it was one of the best things that it possibly could have been for my career to like be part of an organization that had a brand new creative services team. Um, and it was, it's been a blast, like just kind of defining the role versus going into a predefined role. Yeah, so that's, um, it's kind of, so I know you touched on like senior copywriter versus junior copywriter and that kind of sparked some interest in me when I was hearing you uh, talk about that. So like traditionally, um, I know your team doesn't really have like a set standard or I'm sorry, I shouldn't say standard, but like a definition of what the junior versus senior copywriter does, but what are the traditional things that like a senior copywriter would do compared to, let's say a junior copywriter? So I think kind of like to take a step back also, like um, there's a big difference between like a, an agency setting and an internal creative setting. So in an agency setting, I've never worked in an agency. So I just know from like what I've read online when I was looking at agency jobs, you're basically like a junior copywriter is like paired with a art director or graphic designer um, and they'll take feedback and uh, direction from a senior copywriter or an associate creative director or a creative director whatever it may be um, so I can't really sp that's like kind of like basics of like agency life um, and I know it's a lot more stressful and there's a little more like there's not as much career um, safety in like an agency world so but in the world that I'm in so it's like a b2b internal creative services team the difference like we're trying to define those now like we're trying now like kind of put a framework for the future of our team of like what junior does what a senior does but i think traditionally similar to an agency where i should have been taking notes from the senior copywriter the senior copywriter should have been checking my work and you know the creative director my boss shouldn't have really been in the weeds but since we were a new team we were still figuring everything out like it all kind of melded together and I was able to get a lot of great experience and work on projects that maybe I wouldn't have been able to work on because there wasn't really a set trajectory. I mean, when I got the job listing from the CMO, when he reached out to me, which is also just like the craziest thing like that, it happened that way. Um, it was like the, the um, preferred qualifications were three to five years of experience like as a copywriter already like in a professional setting so that was very intimidating for me I was like oh my god like there's no way I can do this like this is like for someone much higher in their career and I mean I guess that's also another good point is like apply everywhere no matter what even if it says like three to five years of experience if it's like for an associate or a junior role like just apply there because it's not worth missing out on an opportunity because they have some unrealistic expectations of like what an undergrad student should look like. Yeah, and well, kind of speaking about like undergraduate students and how you've mentioned interns, are there like certain times where within your experience you've seen that there've been really unrealistic expectations for undergrads and how, if you have any advice on how to go about that or kind of communicating to the other party or maybe the bosses or you know the seniors within the company like hey i'm just an undergrad i can't handle this volume of work or something along those lines yeah so i think that with infor there were moments where like i i didn't do like coffee runs ever thankfully 
but there were moments where like I felt a little bit kind of like okay like this is a little ridiculous like they had me like put like there was kind of like retail event and I had to take USBs and basically download something onto the USBs and it took me hours like I was from 9 a.m to like 8 p.m I think one day like just downloading things on USBs so needed like thousands of them and I did actually talk to my boss and I was like hey look like I know I'm an intern this is not what I signed up for and he was totally cool with it and I think that you know never be afraid to like say like if something is out of the job responsibility that you're not going to want to do it or that you want to at least have help with it if you have to do it um and I think that that's something that was actually a good learning experience for me because like I did it like I was like yeah, of course I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it I'm it's gonna be fine and then I realized like wait this is taking a lot of time this is really not part of what my responsibilities should be and I was doing front work quote unquote for like someone who should have actually been doing it like whether it was I think it was like the marketing manager who should have actually been doing it she's like oh why don't you help? And I was like, you know, I want to be helpful. So I'm like, yeah, sure. Um, and in terms of, you know, as an undergrad looking at job positions that are asking for three to five years of experience, I think it's all about finding those like moments in your undergrad career, whether it's at an internship, whether it's at a club or whether it's even at a classroom setting, like where you have real life experience that can translate well into a resume. Um, I think, you know, maybe this isn't like the best advice, but I definitely think like as an undergrad, sometimes you have to embellish a little bit, you know, like you have to put a little embellishment because some places are just not even going to take a look at you for a horrible reason. I mean, like, I think that it's ridiculous sometimes where you do have like three to five years of experience. Like if you have a part-time job, like, and you have skills from a classroom setting that fit into the part-time job, like put it in there because like, that's what's important. Um, and I think that, you know, in the future, you're going to get that taken off your resume really quickly. Like the part-time jobs that you've had, you're gonna have your full-time position up there. So I think that, you know, make sure that you market the skills that are important for the internship or for the career that you want. Um, I think it's really, really important to, uh, do it in a way where it's like, trying to think like the best way to say this, like you've got to be able to sell yourself like for this career. Like you have to be able to say like, okay, this is like what you're looking for. This is what I have to offer. Um, obviously don't lie about anything. Like if you don't say that, you know how to do a program or coding, if you don't know how to do that. Um, but just make sure you're putting your best foot forward. And I think it's really important to make sure to tailor each resume to every job do not do like a one size fits all as long as if you can help it like of course sometimes you have to because just as an undergrad i know like there's not that much you can write aside from what you did in your internship but try as best as you can to like really make sure the resume and the cover letter especially is tailored to that position yeah that's um really helpful and of course like kind of like a a plug here for career development, like where here's for anybody who may need help with that. So, you know, Gia and Jamie are both in this call and they're wonderful with helping you with the cover letters and such. So if you ever need our help, you know where to find us, but kind of going back to uh, Adam now. So I know if you I had can... also mentioned, oh, yes, yeah, sure, I just want to say, I totally endorse that. <laughs> Yeah. Ms. Christman and Jamie both helped me when I was looking. I sent my resumes to them. Mm -hmm. I sent my cover letters to them and they were incredibly, incredibly helpful. So <laughs> just putting that plug in there too. Yeah. Um, but kind of going back to like your role in your team, I know you mentioned like you're super close knit with your team, but I was wondering how like your role and your team actually interact with kind of the other departments at Getty. Cause I'm sure, I don't know if there've been any newer teams developed, but yeah. as like the brand new team that was developed at Getty, how did that kind of fit into all of the other departments that were already present? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so when I think about it, like we started, and it was a little awkward because we started um, and there was like a massive amount of like um, layoffs for the old marketing team. So I was like, kind of like scared. because I was like, I like walk in and like, there's these like three people that were working on like the side. And I was like, oh, hey guys. And like two weeks later, they're not there anymore. And I was like, oh my God, like I'm next. Um, but it wasn't, it's, I mean, I think that with marketing, like there's definitely a lot of, um, 
motion and like a lot of movement in marketing in terms of people go, people leave. I think at Getty, surprisingly, it's been pretty stable. We've had some departures, but it hasn't been like a, there has never been like an exodus of people, like just like leaving like en masse. And when we started, it was, I think the challenge, the biggest challenge was showing our value because we were a new team. We were taking over things that agencies used to do. So writing emails or like doing paid social ads or creating like sales materials. And I think that over the past four years, like we've really stepped up, we've shown like what the importance of having a creative services team to like create on-brand materials that we know really resonate with customers and that you know, I mean, we know the product. We're sitting in the product now for four years now. We all know about iStock and Getty Images. And I think that that's something that you can't really recreate with an agency because they get a brief, they sort of know it. They, you know, take a look at the website maybe for a second and then just, you know, continue on with their day with other clients. And I think that um, for other departments, just showing that we have, that we bring value and that we are able to create what they need from us and are bringing revenue in from those materials, like that's been like the best kind of feeling is to like really have our team be appreciated by other departments who didn't really know what we were doing before then. Yeah, that's, um, it's, I'm sure it was quite an adjustment to go from like seeing everybody that was there to people leaving. And then you're like, I'm brand new. Like, what do they want from me? So that's kind of going off of that. Would you say you have any like specific advice for Macaulay students, like current Macaulay students who are interested in pursuing a career in the marketing field or along the lines of like copywriting and such? Sure. Um, I think that an internship is definitely, I mean, I know it's like a, you know, like um, beating a dead horse, like internship, internship, internship. But I've got to say an internship is the most important thing. Um, I think that it teaches you on the job things. Um, so definitely look at internships, like just all over and look in places that you wouldn't even think about. I mean, like HBO has internship programs. Um, and I know that like Infor, I, I'm not sure if they have internship programs anymore. I'm not really in touch with anyone from there anymore, but you know, I know Macaulay, I think, or CUNY had some sort of arrangement with them. So, I mean, I think definitely check that out if they have it. Um, aside from that, I will say that I regret not taking any marketing classes. I think that if you're able to, if you're interested in marketing, definitely take some marketing classes because um, there might even be internship opportunities from that. Um, and I think that if you're interested in copywriting or graphic designing, you got to have a portfolio. Um, that is 100% what got me the job at Getty Images because um, Gene, the CMO at Getty, he reached out to me through my portfolio, which he found on LinkedIn. So he didn't even send me a LinkedIn message, send me a portfolio message. And if I didn't have that portfolio, there's absolutely no chance that he would have continued the conversation. So um, whether that means just creating your own ads or like writing your own taglines. Like it's like, you know, you're not being expected to like have full on campaigns as an undergrad, but just doing anything that makes you stand out a little bit more that shows like you have some experience, I think is really, really important. Right. And you mentioned like you would have taken a marketing class um, had you been able to go back. Uh, I know you mentioned you didn't join a lot of clubs per se, but are there any clubs, associations, or organizations that like right now, currently you think students should join if they're interested in the marketing industry? Or um, if you like know any of them now, how they might help students to be able to advance their career in the field? So that I'm not sure about. I mean, we have an internal, like um, at Getty, we have a membership with the Association for National Advertisers. I don't know if they have anything for students, but that might be something that they might have something for students. I'm just, I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Um, it's okay. But yeah, I, like I said, I really, I also, I regret it. I do regret not joining as many clubs mm -hmm. as maybe as I, as I could have. I was kind of like in high school, it was like the like two o'clock club where we just left at two o'clock. Right. Was like, I mean, cause I had like the internship like part-time. So it was kind of just like right after school, go straight to the internship. Um, so yeah, I, Definitely recommend joining some clubs. Well, actually one thing, this isn't a club, but I thought it was very, very useful. I hope it's still being taught, but um, the production class with uh, Robert Small, 
um, in the Macaulay basement. Like there, there's like a class for like, yes, it is being taught still. <laughs> that was really, really valuable. Um, mm -hmm. You learn about production, you learn about editing, you, you, do, you do a bunch of things like Adobe Creative Cloud. So just like getting some experience with that. Definitely, definitely check that out. Cause it's like you produce the CUNY Film Festival, it's two parts. And that was, I think I did that in my senior year and I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. And that's, that's actually, nice. sorry. Oh no, go ahead. <laughs> I would say that's actually a great um, class. That is a great resume pattern mm -hmm. in the best way. Cause there's a lot of stuff you learn on the job and it's something that you can really speak to as though like, it's like legitimate like work experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and my last question for you for the day uh, before I open it up to our students is what is something that you wish more people knew about marketing? So I think that I sort of alluded to this earlier, but I think just like the vast amount of roles that live within marketing, like I never in a million years kind of naively thought about like how many, like it takes a village, like it really does take a village to create like one email it's like there's like a consumer um not consumer it's uh what's it called uh oh, dang. there's like an email team you know there's like an email team there's the people who schedule the emails like the developers who actually develop the emails the writers and designers who design the emails they're the people on the back end who look at the data for the emails like it's crazy like marketing has something for everybody there's like designers developers data scientists um analysts like there's just so much more to marketing than just like oh like i got a great idea i'm gonna do something with it like it really it's just it's a very expansive career field and there's a lot of opportunity for growth um and i think that yeah just kind of learning more about marketing as a discipline is something that's you know that i that I wish I could have done. So I feel like that if there's another piece of advice I'd give, it's just like, yeah, like do some more research into it, like see what kind of career paths and opportunities there are. And there's like demand generation is like a kind of new up and coming thing that's like getting super popular. Like we have like a whole demand gen team now. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's what I'd say about that. Okay, thank you for uh, your advice and everything so far. So uh, at this point, we have about 15 minutes left. So I wanna open it up to all of the participants and students who have joined us. Does anybody have any questions for Adam? You can either put it in the chat or you know, just unmute, we're a really small group. Um, I wanted to ask, um, hi everyone. I hope everyone's doing good. Um, were there moments like, in your career right now where you had to work on a project and you completely had no idea, but you know, you kind of learned <laughs> throughout like the project. Yes. Oh my. So when I was doing, um, so at Getty plenty of times, but I think that at Infor, it was funny because like they had me write, um, like, like ghostwrite articles or like blog posts from the chief, um, operating officer. And he was this like British guy, like, so I tried to like, so you kind of have to like put yourself in like the mind of like him, like, and it was like about like artificial intelligence. I know nothing about artificial intelligence. So you kind of have to like, I have to like piece, I have to like read a bunch of articles, do a bunch of research on AI and then write it kind of like in a British tone of voice. So it actually sound like he was writing it. Like, you know, I did like British spellings and like, so that was really, really funny. And I did that a few times. And that was like one of those things where I was like, oh my God, like, I don't know, like how I'm like that, like talk about like imposter syndrome there. I was like, holy crap. Like I'm literally like being an imposter now of this guy who's like this chief executive officer. Um, so that was kind of funny. And like that, like you had to like learn on the fly. Like, and I think that's actually, thank you for that question. Cause that's actually a good point of like copywriting in general is it's constantly learning about new products about things that you have no idea about like even at getty images like we're talking about like apis and i had to write a landing page about apis i had like i had like a vague understanding of apis so i had to like quickly learn about them and be able to speak to them as though i'm an expert on apis um so yeah <laughs> there's a lot of kind of like on the fly learning and trying to make yourself sound like you really know what you're talking about Thank you. And I also wa I wanted to ask another question. Um, was this, was copy um, writing something that you've always wanted to get into? 
No, <laughs> no. So funny thing. I don't know if anyone here is from John Jay or if anyone knows Miss Fitzgerald, but she's the advisor at John Jay. So she was my advisor because I was initially at John Jay before I did QBA. And when I sat down with her to talk about this internship that I found through the English, you know, major newsletter, she was like, oh my, like, she's, she's amazing, by the way. She's like my, one of my favorite people at Macaulay. And she was like, oh my God, she's like, you're going to hate it. Like, it's so corporate. Like, I just, I don't see it like for you. Like, I think you need to do something more creative. And I was like, ah, oh, I don't know. Like, and but she's like, you know what? But still try it out. Maybe you're going to love it. And that's kind of how I got into it. I had no idea what copywriting was before I have been doing it now. My dad, I think, still doesn't know what copywriting is. Like, he wanted me to be a lawyer. So, like, even, like, in the past few years, he's like, so, are you still going to law school? And I was like, no, absolutely not. Um, and it's just, it's funny, because, like, it's it's something that a lot of people, like, associate with, like, copyright law. And I've had a lot of people and friends say, like, oh, so you're a lawyer. And I'm like, I am not a lawyer. <laughs> I work with lawyers to like see if like what we're writing is legal, but like, no, no actual like law stuff in there. But yeah, I mean, so yeah, to answer your question, I have no, I had no idea what copywriting was before I got into it. And I'm very glad that I did get into it because it's, it's a fun career. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? You guys can just jump in. Um, hi, my name is Gianna. I wanted to thank Adam for speaking with us today and um, for um, everyone involved for coordinating this. But um, my question is, do you um, see the like need for a master's degree and kind of what you do based on um, your colleagues or, or your bosses? Like how um, necessary do you feel that um, having a master's degree is right now? So that's a good question because that's something that I've thought about. I'll say this. So my manager has a master's degree, but he got it because he was working at Sony at the time. And at Sony, they had a tuition reimbursement program oh, where cool. they paid for his master's degree. I don't think it's totally necessary though. Like if you're looking for like agency or internal creative team work, I don't think it's necessary. Not that you shouldn't do it. Cause I, I'll tell you, like I have, looked at other jobs and like other listings and tuition reimbursement like if i could get a master's degree i totally would like if i had a i w but i wouldn't go for like a just speaking for myself i wouldn't pay for a master's degree to do what i'm doing now i think that it's I feel a lot of it could be learned through experience more yes, than yes okay exactly and i think that's what's gonna take you further than a master's degree especially in like this type of field um it's different though if you're looking maybe at uh, marketing like leadership, like, like if you're doing, um, if your plan is becoming like a CMO, uh, like as a long-term goal, like potentially there's going to be more of a need for one, but I also don't think it's that necessary. I feel like there's so many young CMOs now who are in like their thirties working at startups and tech organizations that do not have a master's degree. So I think that it's, it's a nice to have, if you can get it for cheap or for free would be even better but I would not definitely not say it's like a necessity. I understand. Thank you. Of course. Do we have any other questions? The next uh, student or participant can just join in. Hi, Adam. Hello. Um, do you have any tips on creating a portfolio website? Like, are there any website creation sites that you'd recommend or did you like build yours entirely from scratch? Okay, so I used Weebly. It is not the most beautiful one. I can actually um, link it out if you guys wanna see what it looks like later, just like kind of have an idea of what it could look like. And I will say that I'm not a graphic designer at all. Um, I think that as an intern, as like a, or as like a young creative professional, like that's fine. Like you just kind of got to get your work out there. So I would definitely recommend Weebly, Squarespace, um, any of those like kind of building block websites. If you're talented with coding and you can know how to code and can build your own website, even better because that shows off, you know, another skill set that you have. Um, but I will say that, yeah, I think that that's having a portfolio. If you're doing like graphic design, copywriting, very, very important. It's, I know I've said it before, but it's very, very important. So that's a great question. And I think that you know, 
Squarespace, Weebly, I would recommend. Um, I think Squarespace might look a little more refined. I've only stuck with Weebly because I already, I already made it. Like I made it when I was in at Macaulay and I kind of just, I've been too lazy to like migrate it to like another server. Um, or Wix. Wix is a great one too. Wix is really good. Um, and yeah, I would recommend paying to get the, excuse me, like the, whatever the website dot weebly dot com out and just have it like, it's like my website is just like adamzplowski.com. So like you can remove like the Weebly or Wix or the Squarespace branding. Um, I think that that just, you don't have to do it, but it does make it seem a little more professional. Cool, and also, thank you. of course, yeah. And actually just as an, as an, an on another note, um, cause it's something that I wish I did when I was interning at Infor, save all your work. Everything that you produce, everything that you create as an intern, save it, put it in a folder, you know, put it in the back of your hard drive, computer, whatever, just like save that because you never know when something from there might be useful in a job interview. If you're show, if you have to show work samples or you want to show your portfolio, like there's a infographic that I worked on um, when I was at Infor for like a pumpkin spice latte. It's like when pumpkin spice latte was like becoming like crazy, crazy thing. And I never saved the PDF. So I have like this image of it that's on my portfolio and I, it just does not look great, but it's like more just to show that I know how to do infographics, but like, I really regret not saving like clippings from like blogs that I wrote um, when I was an intern or, you know, like those uh, thought leadership pieces from like the British guy. Like I didn't save any of those. I didn't even think about it. And now it's like, I really regret not saving those. That's true. The Macaulay portfolio. I still have mine, I think. <laughs> and a LinkedIn. You got to have a LinkedIn. I'm sure everyone has LinkedIn, but yeah, LinkedIn is definitely very important. And so we have about like five minutes left. So I think we have time for like one or two more questions. Does anybody else want to ask a question? So let me just get my LinkedIn. I'll share that and I'll share my portfolio. And I'll also share, um, I was actually looking for uh, the Getty career site and I will send that to, unfortunately, I don't think there's any roles that are like junior, um, but definitely worth keeping an eye on. And it's something that I worked on also. So that's, you know, nice little fun plug. Let me just get the Getty Career site. There you go. And while we still have five minutes, and if anyone has any question, please ask. I'm just gonna see if I could find in for internships very quickly. Here is Infor's website, just in case. And yes, if anyone does have any questions, if anyone wants to chat more, whatever else, always feel free to send me a message on LinkedIn, send me an email. I think, I don't know if um, you could share my email out for getting images or uh, just any way, which way, happy to talk or about anything. Hi, I have a question. Yeah, of course. Um, could you say email out loud because I'm dialing into my phone and this is my first time using the phone to dial in. I don't really know. <laughs> of course. It, so so um, if you, so for my uh, LinkedIn, it's, um, if you just type in Adam Plowski, you should be able to find me. And then my website is adamzplowski.com. And then I don't know if um, Jamie, Janina, and if you, if you guys would be able to even like send this out. Yeah. Email. Absolutely. We can share that via email um, for the student who's on the phone. As long as you registered for the event and you left your email with us, we'll make sure to get that information out to you guys. Yeah. Okay. So uh, as we're... 
Oh, no, you're welcome. Um, but yeah, we're kind of reaching the end now. So I'm going to give a big thank you to Adam for joining us today and for all of your wonderful advice and making yourself accessible to the students. Um, we'll be sending out more information after we conclude our meeting here and we'll include all of the links that Adam has sent. So thank you everyone for joining us today. And I believe we'll be putting up a survey, Gia. Um, if everybody can answer that, or we might be sending one after this ends in an email. Oh, it's up here right now, yeah. So if everybody can answer this, we'd be really grateful. So thank you, Adam, and thank you everybody for joining. We hope you had a good time. Of course, this is excellent, and I'm very happy to talk to other college students. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for your time. Yeah, and for anybody so who's much. filling out the uh, workshop survey at the moment, we also have a few Macaulay career development events coming up. So we have the AIG A Day in the Life of with AIG uh, coming up next week on the 9th. And we also have our industry talks for consulting coming up next Friday. I'm sorry, that's next Thursday. Um, so anybody who is interested, I'll put the link to our events in the chat box as well. So you guys can also take a look at those if you're interested. Adam, thank you so much again for joining us. It's so wonderful to see you. And I have to say, uh, if it's okay for me to share this, when we first met, just the level of confidence that you're at right now is uh, much, much greater. <laughs> but of course, I met you as an undergrad, you know. Um, but it, it's been really fantastic to hear the advice that you're giving to students. Um, it's spot on. And, and we really, really appreciate you joining us today and spending the time. Of course, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, once again, I will, I will plug Miss Christman and Jamie again. They're <laughs> excellent and help me so much with um, just career prep and everything. So, yeah, definitely send resumes to them before you send them out, just in case, because they have a lot of great insights. <laughs> Thank you. And um, just in case any students are wondering how you get in touch with us, we are on the Macaulay website. Um, so as soon as you get on the Macaulay website and you look up career development, uh, both Jamie and I are on there um, with our email addresses that are available. Um, so just feel free to email us. We do have a closed um, at the moment because we don't have the specific module, but that is coming up on career path very soon. We're getting the full edition. Um, which is great news, but at the moment we're using um, set more. And so that's a closed link. Once you email us, we'll provide that link and then you can set up an appointment to meet with us and review your resume or cover letter. Adam, this was so great. Thank you so much. As someone that did marketing pre-career counseling, you definitely make it sound better than I had an experience. <laughs> so I'm so glad that you're having a positive time at Getty because I think just to take a note really quick, I think it's so important to note the culture of where you work. And I know you mentioned earlier about your coworkers. I mean, if Gia didn't work at Macaulay and I, there weren't all those amazing students, I don't know if I would be at Macaulay. You know, the students in Gia and the Macaulay team really make it so special. And I think to your point, when you're looking at different places, it's obviously hard in an interview to make a judgment call, but really remember interviews are a two way street. You're interviewing them too. And to be happy where you work is so important. And I think people don't talk about it enough. Um, so I appreciate you, Adam, bringing that up, but yeah, thank you so I, much. Of course. And if I could say, well, cause actually like piggyback on that, like that is one thing I'll say, like, I absolutely love working at Getty because of the people at Getty. And I've had times where like, even in the past, even like this last week, I spoke to somebody just like a recruiter and I got a really, really bad vibe. And it's one of those things where like, listen to your instincts. If you feel like you're getting a bad vibe, like a good manager is hard to find, you know, a bad manager can make your life like miserable. And a bad team can like, no matter how great the job is, how great the company, if the team's not good, you are not going to have a good time. And it's 
not worth your mental health and like your emotional health and wellness, like to just stick it out. So thank you, Jamie, because that's, that's a really, really good point. Totally. All right. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Adam, again. Yeah. I hope everyone thank you. enjoyed this uh, event and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. You too. You as well. Bye guys. And Bye. contact me if you have any other questions.